And it just, to me, the whole debate turned into a bit of a train wreck. And we really got to see what was really wrong with the political process, all the obstructionism, all the misinformation, and just so much confusion. And I think that many of us just felt extremely confused. Right. Our guest is Annabelle Park, founder of the Coffee Party USA. We're taking your calls at 800-433-8850. What do you think is the best way to foster grassroots involvement in politics? Do you think the Coffee Party can impact politics in Washington? 800-433-8850. Your website says that the Coffee Party, quoting here, gives voice to Americans who want to see cooperation in government. What, in a nutshell, does the Coffee Party stand for? Well, this is actually the biggest difference between the Coffee Party and the Tea Party. It seems to me that the Tea Party has declared war on the federal government and objects to pretty much what it stands for conceptually. And what I think the majority of Americans believe is that the federal government really has to be part of the solution. And that going forward, we have so many challenges that we have to face together collectively. And it really is the only institutional apparatus we have for collective action and decision making. And to say no to that and to obstruct any kind of movement in that is very destructive. What's your take on the job that Congress has been doing? What do you like and what do you dislike about the performance of Congress on late? You heard the Tea Partyists say they feel that health care reform is rushed through in a pushed through in a partisan manner. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think we, I want to separate Congress um, kind of the machinery of it from the individual serving in it. So I feel like the machine is really quite broken. So it's like saying, you know, um, uh, there could be many good drivers in Congress, but if the car is broken, it's very hard to make any kind of progress, and it's hard to make demands on them to drive well when the machine's not working. I feel like there's so many things that we have to look at in terms of fixing the machinery, you know, Senate procedure rules, uh, getting money out of politics campaign finance reform, and there's a very wide consensus that the political process needs to be fixed. If indeed the process is broken, but the concept of government is not, from a philosophical perspective, mm -hmm. what role do you think government should be playing in the lives of everyday people? Well, the government is supposed to represent our needs and interests and desires, right? But there is something broken, this connection right now between those desires that are very real and urgent and the actual representation in Congress. I think that there was a wide consensus for health care reform, even for public option in health care reform, but somehow it got disconnected from the process. And I think we need to understand how that happened. And I don't have the answers, but going forward, we've got to connect the two things, the real urgent desires and needs that people have out there, because there's a lot of struggling happening, and the representation in Congress. When you see what you say was a broad consensus for health care reform, and maybe a broad consensus mm -hmm. for a public option in health care reform, when you see that characterized as socialism, what does that say to you? I think that politics has turned into a kind of game. You know, you can say that it's like a football game right now with two teams. And it's always about winning and losing. And it's not, not even a football game. It's turned into ultimate fighting, where the rules have become just like gone off the window. It's about viciousness. It's about a smackdown, right? And that's the problem. So these words get thrown out for smackdowns, but they don't actually mean that much to me. You know, the desire for health care reform has very little to do with this kind of rhetorical in outpouring, calling it fascist or socialist or communist. I just think those words have become rendered meaningless. On to the telephones. Here now is Taliba in Laurel, Maryland. Taliba, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, thank you so much for taking my call. Um, I would just like to comment that, you know, as a, a Muslim and an African-American, you know, uh, we were forced very much to come here to this country. And so we have come to rely very heavily on the support of the government. And for an organization like the Tea Party to come along and say, throw the government away, that surely does leave us at a loss. And I really do appreciate an organization like the Coffee Party that's come along and said, look, we've got to be realistic. This is the organization, the government is the organization that makes a way for all of us to live together. And I think that it's important that we look at this and recognize that African Americans have to depend on the government to do and be responsible for 
uh, before the human issue that we have uh, having been forced to come here. Care to respond to that, Annabelle Park? Well, I appreciate the support, <laughs> and I agree with you <laughs> that I do think this is necessary, that you know, we have to start having very reality-based conversations about the challenges that we face. We have to go beyond the game. We have to go beyond winning and losing. Thank you very much for your call, Talaba. You had a national summit over the weekend. Tell mm-hmm. us a little bit about that. Right. This is actually the second time we came together as a community at the national level. We had over 450 events across the country in almost every single state. And I think it really speaks to the need that people have to actually participate in the decision-making process. And that's really what a democracy is. It's a community of people who come together to make decisions collectively about our common future, advance the common good. That's what we have to get back to. One of the things that has characterized the Tea Party has been, certainly in the eyes of the public, anger, certain anger and resentment about the role of the federal government. Is there an anger in the coffee party? I think there's a, um, a good mix of emotions. Anger is part of it. There's also discontent. There's also hope. There's also passion um, and excitement. I mean, there. You know, I, I can't say that it characterizes the coffee party, but I do think there's definitely reaction to the rhetoric and anger from the Tea Party and also this general sense that we have to get our government to be more productive, to be more cooperative. We don't want to spend another year like we did last year on any issue. We have to talk about immigration reform, climate change. There's so many other things we have to talk about. Do we have to go through this culture war for every issue? We've got to change this. Here is Vincent in Frederick, Maryland. Vincent, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Yeah, um, one of the things I'll I'll say immediately is I don't believe there's any hatred toward our president, and I don't believe um, that that's what these Tea Party or even the Coffee Party or other parties... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Our Tea Party guests said that those were extremes in the element, but to say you don't believe that there is any hatred against our president? Have you you seen some of the posters? Let me state it again. They may not be a majority, but there is hatred out there, Vincent. The premise premise behind these grassroots efforts, we have a disagreement with the president and the administration's policy and disingenuous representation of what they said they were going to do a year ago and what they've done, especially with the latest health care bill or overhaul reform that passed. That can't be uh, argued. Now, there's hatred everywhere, but that's not the premise behind the grassroots, all right? The second thing is, um, I have to disagree with the coffee, um, with our guest here, on one, one premise behind the Tea Party. And that is, and, and I'm not a member of it, but I, I have to disagree with this. This is, that they, there is this free speech, and they, they do oppose a, um, a federal government and takeover of certain functions that they cannot operate efficiently, and it's been proved. So although the government is there for foreign policy, national protection, as some guests falsely, or excuse me, some callers seem to falsely assume that, well, without government, we would not have a police force. Um, as the previous guest speaker said, that's not what they're saying. They're talking about the overreach of the federal government, and that's what most people at, at the grassroots are disappointed with. It has nothing to do with, with the president being black, half black, half white. It has nothing to do with that. Here's Annabelle Park. Right. Um I I understand that you might feel frustrated about how the Tea Party might be represented. And, you know, what we are seeing with the Tea Party is translated through the prism of media. So I know that there is actually a diversity of opinions out there among the Tea Party members. But we are seeing name calling. You know, we are seeing really uncivil behavior from people who identify as Tea Party. And it's hard not to respond to that. Right. And in terms of like the government overreach, um, yeah, I mean, you know, this whole idea of limited government that is such a big part of the Tea Party platform. I mean, if you think about it, that's a very American concept. Who who wants unlimited government? Because that leads to totalitarianism and dictatorship. Indeed, it seems that there mm-hmm. are some similarities, if mm-hmm. you will, between the coffee party and the tea party, particularly in the disenchantment over corporate influence in government. Yes. What mm-hmm. similarities do you see between the two movements? 
Right. Well, that's a very central similarity, and I think that's again like it's it's uh, it's we shouldn't think about it in terms of I think coffee party versus tea party. But if you actually look at the polls out there, most Americans believe that Congress needs to be fixed and that we need to take money out of politics. The kind of overwhelming response of the Citizens United decision, I think, speaks to the sense that corporations have undue disproportionate influence over our politics. So again, that's a machinery problem that we have to fix. Although our Tea mm-hmm. Party activists seem to be in agreement with the Citizens United decision here, so mm-hmm. on that aspect of corporate influence over politics, you may disagree. Yes, we might disagree about some of the, the ways to fix the machine, but I think we agree that the machine has to get fixed. Here is Hal in Fairfax, Virginia. Hal, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Thank you for taking my call, Kojo. Um, uh, one thing I'd like to, I, I said to your, uh, your call screener um, was that um, the coffee party has a realistic, a realistic view of how things have to work. You have to compromise. Some of the things that come out of it you're not going to like. Some of the things that uh, come out of it you're going to love. It's something interesting about government is that 100% of, or, I'm sorry, the current health care debate is 100% of people end up on government health care. And I was asked what this, uh, what is your definition of government health care? Well, I guess uh, that's that's an incorrect term uh, to use for me. But um, Medicaid, I, I, or Medicare, I'm sorry, is a government program. Yes. Um, that everyone pays. We're running out of time, and I'd like for you to ask a question that Annabelle Park can respond to. I, I guess Annabelle, what is your what is my question is what is your strategy for being heard over this shrillness that is going on. Annabelle Park. Right. What we need to do in order for us to have a functioning democracy is for majority of Americans to be active citizens, to take on the responsibility for the decision-making process, right? So it's about getting a, a new, creating a new political culture in which there is civic participation and There's a sense of honesty and truth-seeking. What we're presenting is a model of civic participation and a call for people to participate in the process instead of being passive voters. You know, during campaigns, people know how to plug into the campaigns if they choose. But after campaigns, it's very difficult for people to find opportunities to be effective and have input. And we're trying to organize that input. So that's what we're doing. As of Friday, the coffee party had 183,436 people following it on Facebook, which means you're growing very quickly. Obviously, you're going to have to come back in the future to tell us how more it has grown or not grown. Annabelle Park, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Annabelle Park is the founder of the Coffee Party USA, and we don't have a call screener here. Our phone facilitator, phony facilitator, is Dorian Isman. I'm Kojo Nandi.